I have three apples that do not support PCIe GPUs. This one, this one, and this one. But guess what? I also have an Apple that does. The Apple XServe 3,1 is the very last server that Apple ever released for their commercial and education customers. And compared to modern Macs, it has many abilities that some consider to be unnatural. Like upgradable memory, upgradable CPUs, and even, yes, the ability to run a graphics card. Wait, are we about to game on an Apple server? Yes. And we're about to tell you about our sponsor. Govee, turn a regular old wall into a showcase for your creativity with Govee's Curtain Light. With a DIY mode, versatile effects, and voice control, the possibilities are endless. It's also IP65 water resistant for when things get moist. I don't know why you'd need that, and I won't ask. Check it out at the link below. I know we've talked about this machine in the past, but there are just so many things about it that are utterly unlike anything Apple does today. Check this out. Onboard power and reset switches. Not only does it not have a chassis intrusion that prevents you from powering it on when the case is open, they outright enable it. And this is great. Apple actually delitted the Nehalem architecture Xeons that were at the heart of this thing and then used a shim to prevent the die from cracking, just like you can buy from Der Bauer today. Because these are regular socketed CPUs, we could actually upgrade them. However, most of the higher performance Xeons from this generation have much higher TDPs. Ironically, this use of enthusiast class cooling solutions does make Apple's XServe machines a little bit tougher to upgrade because you'd have to de-lid any off-the-shelf Xeon that you wanted to put into it. But fortunately, the E5520 that we have in here is only about 20% slower than the fastest chips that shipped in this machine. And while there are faster ones that you could install aftermarket, they run at significantly higher TDPs and this cooling solution has a hard time keeping them under control. So we're just going to uh, leave those for now. Replacing my one gig sticks, I have, oh wow, these 16 gig sticks from Kingston. That's good. That's gonna give us a total of 96 gigs of RAM in this. That is over a 15X upgrade in memory capacity. Oh yeah. Every stick I put in has more RAM. Oh yeah. Than the whole system had when we, oh yeah, started. It's the double-edged sword of upgradability. You can change out your hardware, but will it work? I don't know. Now it's time for the big moment where we pull out our network card and install any GPU we want in that PCIe 16X slot. That's right, before Apple had their big falling out with Nvidia, you could put GeForce cards into a Mac. This one specifically. Okay, so we're gonna pause for a second and you guys are gonna click on the card that you want me to install. Go ahead. I'm kidding, there's no way for me to do a poll like this. You guys just pause the video. What do you think you're doing? Also, we have a problem. There is... Okay, I just ripped that off, which maybe helps. It doesn't. That's okay, I have an idea. Oh, that wasn't the idea. This is my idea. By putting a PCIe riser in this slot right here, we should be able to quickly and easily hook up any card we want. Now I just have to find a good spot for it. Nice. No? Why would I be worried about that? The fan's right here. No, no, I mean on for the rest of the system. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, so the GPU needs to be outside of the chassis. Ah, that's why I thought of having my writer bring a much longer PCIe expansion thing. Oh, I think I get it. Ha ha. Oh boy, this is not good. There we go. Um, yeah. can hear the ghost of Tim Cook just screaming in agony. Okay. Now we're good to go, is what I would say if we had any way to power this thing. 
which we do. By using one of these jumpered 24 pin female connectors, all it does is bridge the green and any ground wire. Boop, we can turn on a power supply without a computer connected to it. So, dun, 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 um, here, what an elegant solution. Then we just need to power everything up. All right. I'm forgetting something, an HDMI cable. Also, I need somewhere safe to put this GPU. You were just gonna let me put this back down on here, weren't you? He was, look at him. No back plate, that would have shorted out. That would have actually been very bad. Got the 12 volt in the ground right there. Yeah, that seems much better. Now we just plug in our HDMI cable. Thank you, Colin. I am not seeing a lot of action here. Uh, it would probably help if you actually turned the computer on. Oh, that's right. I forgot. This is not on yet. It just makes that noise when it's thinking about turning on. Good boy. Now, the question you're probably asking yourself is, what environment is he going to boot into? Are they going to game on Steam in Mac OS? Are we? Yeah. Yes! Yes, we are! We're going to try. Uh, how long is the boot up cycle? Uh, we should be seeing something by now. I think we're getting dangerously close to time to start trying stuff. Oh, yeah. That's my favorite. Oh, 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 we got something. It's gray. We got something? We got a gray screen there. I am going to try something. I'm going to start by turning off the computer. Then I am going to remove this PCIe card. I think it's possible this cable may have gotten damaged when we were jamming it through that PCI slot for the second time. So we do test things ahead of time, but sometimes it ends up biting us in the butt. Go figure, right? How dare you test things? Wow, there's so much cool stuff on here. I didn't even see this last time. Look at this. It's got a whole bank of LED code lights here for Memory, PLL voltage, core voltage, amazing. Another possibility is that when I reseated that CPU, one of the pins got a little misaligned. So let me pop that off and put it back in. And who knows, maybe ripping things off it damaged it somehow. Mm, did I ever make things better rather than worse? Pretty sure. Come on, baby. You can do it. Well, that was something. I'm gonna reseat the RAM. Come on, baby. I believe in you. New thought. Maybe we're at a platform memory limitation. I'm gonna pop two sticks and see what happens. Whoa, hey! We're up. Okay. Interesting. Cool, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, from what we were able to find, the platform supports well over 100 gigs of RAM. But not necessarily at this density. But what was the maximum RAM supported by this platform again? So for the processor itself, it says it's 144. But if I'm looking at every Mac, which lists all of the different versions of this, it says official max is 24 and 48. Obviously that. that's not right because we currently have 64 in here. But one thing that I did find out when I was just trying to look up this blinking light here is that at least on the older versions of the x serve for the G4, G5, a blinking light like this could mean an ECC error. I see. Do we settle for dual channel or do we try the other set of three slots? and see if maybe we've just got a bad memory slot. If we had a bad memory slot, it wouldn't be booting with the other set of RAM. Sure it would, if I took the stick out of the slot. I put these back in the slots you had them in. So if one of those third ones is bad, then it could be bad. Valid. Let's shut it down. Yep. Now we find out how much of a problem it is to populate the secondary memory slots first in this particular platform. 96 gigs of RAM. Not because I need it, but how many people have a Mac gaming rig with 96 gigs of RAM? Come on. Ah! No, okay. 
Do you notice what's happening right over here? Yes. Yeah, so those lights are flashing angrily at us now. Though That doesn't usually happen. Oh. That's, that's probably still a, some sort of issue with the RAM. So we're running dual channel then. Well, that's an interesting thing for us to find out totally by accident. In that case, let's go straight for maximum points, put our PCIe riser back in, and see if this thing fires up. <laughs> Not gaming. <laughs> yeah, the blue lights are no longer on. This bodes well. I'm so confident, I'm moving around to this side. Hey, there we go. There you go. Yes! Mac Gaming! This is Titan X Black. This is Maxwell. This is GeForce 900 series. That's right. We might actually get somewhat decent gaming performance out of this thing. What just happened? Is this Steam? Yes, it is. Buddy? Whoa, hey, it's back. Uh, Whoa. Wait, is this that, farther that than you got? That normally doesn't happen. Normally it stays black. Oh, okay. Well, this is, wait, oh. Uh, well, what did I click on? No, I had it working. Oh, I can just click on things. If I click the right spots, can I launch a game? Yes. Oh, However, I the get... game will also be pitch black. Oh, really? Every game? As far as I'm able to tell, I can't really click through to most of them. Now, you mentioned that someone, some foolhardy, beautiful soul was still updating NVIDIA drivers on macOS. This looks fairly old though. They're taking older drivers that aren't normally supported for this uh -huh. and, and making them work. They're not taking the absolute newest drivers. However, I don't think this is a graphical issue or necessarily, I don't think this is a GPU driver issue. Oh. I do have a solution for it, but I'd like to just take one second to talk about why it might be happening. I think it's because Chrome no longer supports this version of Mac OS, and Steam uses a lot of Chromium underneath it. Oh, yeah, Steam is just basically a web browser. That makes sense. Okay, workaround. Are we heading for the terminal? We are, and the command that you're going to use is up in that file at the top right corner. And here is where we see that Steam no longer cares about this version of Mac OS as oh, of September 1st. it's gonna stop running in 76 days. This is the second time this has happened in like two weeks where we got one of these notifications that it was about to be unsupported on our platform. We're like, thank goodness we made this video today. Oh, I am so excited right now. There's gonna be a great gaming computer for just over two months. We could play Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Portal 2, Batman Arkham Asylum Game of the Year Edition. I mean, it is a good game. How about we install Portal 2? 64 gigs, 1066 RAM. That's another thing that we would be able to upgrade if we had better CPUs, is our RAM speed. We'd be able to do 1333. Wow, that is a slow SSD. Wait, is that a hard drive in the front? It's a hard drive in the front, but you might be downloading directly to the SSD inside of it. I doubt it. Not at the speed this is going. What happened to my desktop? Half of my desktop is gone. Oh my God, this is so slow. I think we need to find a way to get the library working properly. Steam library folders. Yeah, see, this, that's, that's what this is. Okay. So how do we edit this? Wait a second, I have an idea. What if we just try to launch whatever the Mac version of an executable is from that other drive? Hmm. That could, that could work. Uh, where, the, where is our other drive? I mean, it's here, untitled, right? There should be one that just at the root has a Steam games folder. So our other drive is not even in here anyway. No, that, that's, that's just the two partitions on the internal drive. Well, let's hot swap it. Unplug it and plug it back in again. Number one tech tip. It is not spinning. I think it may have died on the way over here. Why does this happen every time we come to set? Things work perfectly until cameras roll. I think that drive's dead, dude. No. How much does that matter? Not really, but there's only so many of those that still exist. Oh, okay, but it doesn't matter for the video? No. I'm totally over it. 
I will <laughs> never recover from this. Tanner apparently had all of our Mac compatible games installed on this drive. I guess we're gonna play some Portal 2 then to make ourselves feel better. Why did Apple have to give up on gaming? My friend had all the cool games on his Mac when we were kids. My mouse is not working. Uh, look up, I mean, boy, am I ever trying. Uh, hey, Tanner. Hey, what, what's happening? Are you expecting the uh, mouse to not work in this game? Nope. Were you able to play Portal 2? I did not attempt to, but I did play Counter-Strike successfully. Okay, boy, is that ever a lot of tearing. Is that expected? Yes. Ah, okay. I think I found a fix. You need to go to windowed mode, then back to full screen, and it should fix it. And this bug has existed for six years. I've got, oh, 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 whoa, hey, yes, we're looking around. Re oh. Wow, that frame pacing, though. But restarting the game totally fixed it. I am gaming. This does not feel like 300 frames per second. I am going to turn on V-Sync. Words I never thought I would say. The lag though. Andrew can look at this. Can you see it? Oh yeah. We don't even need a high speed camera to show how bad that input lag is. That's like 60, 80 milliseconds. It's awful. No, I'll take the tearing. Oh. And I think we crashed. Didn't even make it out of the tutorial. While I was waiting for our second game to finish installing, I was poking around and struck by the fact that for a machine from almost 15 years ago, these specs, at least on the surface, look shockingly modern. They have eight processing cores in here, 64 gigs of RAM, okay? 12 gigs of GPU VRAM. I mean, many modern cards only have eight. Batman Arkham Asylum Game of the Year. It's a really good game. I played it through. This is very much running. But that's a solid, easy 60 plus FPS. I think it's more, it's really hard to tell with the motion blur. Like, oh man, early motion blur particularly. It looks like garbage. Look at the little artifacts around his ears. Can you see that, Tanner? Yeah. Oh, whoa, that was weird. <laughs> If I move the mouse too fast, it activates the pointer finder feature and puts a gigantic mouse cursor in the middle of my screen. And aside from these odd bugs, you can see that out of our pretty large library of games here, very few of them are natively supported on the Mac. So what are our options then? Because this is an Intel-based Mac, actually nothing would theoretically prevent us from installing Windows, except the absence of support in bootcamp for this particular model. Folks have tried to emulate a UEFI preboot environment on this machine, but they haven't found any success, which means this is about as good as it gets. And once Steam stops running on Mac OS 10.11 in 76 days, the X serves time as a weird niche, very limited gaming platform are pretty much over. And that's not even just the software. Nvidia cards haven't had support in almost 10 years, but even AMD cards are looking like they are not going to be supported by Apple moving forward on their M series Apple Silicon. But there is good news. The game porting toolkit that was just announced at WWDC 2023 looks like it could address a lot of the difficulties that developers have had porting their games to the Mac. All that remains to be seen, given that it was clearly possible to port your games in the past, is whether developers will support it. And it remains to be seen who's gonna do a segue to our sponsor. Grammarly, we're always looking for ways to improve our writing here at Linus Media Group, but with our pace of production, there's very little time to check for errors in grammar or tone, and you should know that. That's where Grammarly Go comes in. Grammarly Go offers generative AI assistance that levels up our productivity when it comes to business emails, sponsor talking points, video scripts, and more. The best part, Grammarly Go is free to use and it works on all your favorite apps with 100 prompts per month at no charge. That's 100 different ways to ask Linus for a free computer. One of our favorite things about Grammarly Go is the ability to customize our preferred style of communication with the set voice option, so you can sound as charming or passive aggressive as you want. 
And the features don't stop there. The reply feature helps us summarize emails, and it even suggests responses to help get through inboxes quicker. You'll be amazed at what you can do with Grammarly Go. Sign up at Grammarly.com slash Linus Tech Tips and get 20% off Grammarly Premium. If you guys enjoyed this video, you might enjoy part one, where we did a bit of a deeper dive into what this thing was actually for, because um, janky gaming wasn't it.